Pictures have now surfaced of an accused terrorist suspected of being a key player in the 9-11 terror attacks. They show Ramzi bin al Sheib inside his cell at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Let's get some insight from our national security analyst, Peter Berg. And, uh, all right, you know something about Ramzi bin al Sheib, but tell us about these pictures, why they surfaced now, and what they're likely to mean. Well, uh, they appear to have come from the Red Cross. Uh, they were taken by the Red Cross and given to the, the detainee's family, and somehow they've... When, when representatives of the International Committee for the Red Cross were allowed to visit right. Guantanamo Bay, they took these pictures. Right, and then they've come through the lawyers or the family. It was, it's unclear, and they've shown up on some jihadi websites. Of course, for the jihadist, Ramzi bin al Sheba is a great hero. He's one of the persons who, by his own admission, uh, plan the 9-11 attacks. So uh, the fact that these now are being used for propaganda on these pro-Al-Qaeda websites, wh what does that mean to you? Well, I don't know. I mean, these pictures could play either way because, I mean, they certainly show that Ramzi bin al Sheba is looking pretty well. He has, he's obviously showing no signs of Ill, Ill health or poor treatment. He's actually, he looks better than he did, you know, <laughs> several years ago. Uh, so, you know, I, I, th I think the pictures are just you know, for the jihadists, this guy is a hero. Recent pictures of him is something that they would want to show. Remind our viewers what, what he did in connection with 9-11. Well, he applied for an American visa. He wanted to be one of the hijackers. He was turned down. He's a Yemeni. Uh, he then basically assumed uh, a quite important role in, in coordinating all the acts of the hijackers. He was a liaison between the hijackers in the United States and Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. He did this all from Hamburg, Germany, where he was then living. I guess one of the arguments is that these pictures show him devout, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, it, I guess the argument is, if you support al-Qaeda, take a look at Ramzi bin al Sheib. He has defeated the Americans. Look at how good he's, uh, how well he's, he's doing right now. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily take that away. I mean, maybe uh, if you're a jihadist, you would. But, uh, you know, my, the main takeaway to me is that this is a guy who's obviously in good health, who's not being badly treated, who's, you know, and who's been allowed access to, his, to the International Red Cross. Let's talk about this other uh, story that has now come forward. A couple, a young couple in Afghanistan, stoned to death by the Taliban for eloping, if you will. Uh, right. This is the first time I think this has happened since, uh, since the U.S. went into Afghanistan after 9-11. Actually, there have been some other cases, maybe not directly the Taliban doing it. Was, there have been people stoned to death for adultery in, in Afghanistan since 9-11. What's interesting to me, Wolf, is this took place in Kunduz, in northern Afghanistan, an area we don't think of as an area being controlled by the Taliban. A very good piece, piece this weekend by Josh Partlow in the Washington Post explaining how the Taliban have increasingly infiltrated uh, the north, an area uh, the north doesn't have that many Pashtuns. The Taliban is a largely Pashtun uh, uh, movement, but there are pockets of Pashtuns. So the fact that you've got a stoning of, of a, a man and a, and a, and a woman uh, in an area that two or three years ago you would have not said there would any Taliban element there. That to me was one of the takeaways of this story. I mean, the way it's been described by eyewitnesses, this young couple, a 25 or so year old man and 19 year old woman, they are surrounded by hundreds of, of people who are just throwing stones at them uh, and, and kill them. Yeah. Well, and certainly, you know, under the Taliban, public executions of this kind were, uh, you know, not, on, not uncommon. And uh, I think there's a reality check for those who say, well, the Taliban is people we can do business with or negotiate with. Well, do you really want to do business with a, with a, reg with a group that continues to do these kinds of things? Yeah, it's shocking when you think about it. All right, uh, Peter, thanks very much.